Hello. Today's course is about circulating tumor cells or CTCs as biomarkers in clinical development and healthcare. This is an abbreviated version of a course that is offered by the Biopharmaceutical Institute. How do you find one or more circulating tumor cells in the blood? There are so many blood cells, they're called hematopoietic cells. People compare this to finding a needle in a haystack. Luckily and fortunately for patients, clinicians and pharmaceutical scientists and drug developers, the technology was developed to analyze these cells and find circulating tumor cells in the blood of patients as low as one per 7.5 mils of blood. And this course and the longer version will discuss in detail. Now, what are biomarkers? And especially cancer biomarkers. Now, they have to be specific to cancer. The biomarkers have to be obtained by non-invasive techniques and that's why circulating tumor cells is of such interest because they are obtained in blood draws and blood is very easily to be taken unlike other uh, ways of obtaining samples such as biopsy. It is also very important to have the biomarkers table during shipping and storage of the assay and in this case the technology has been developed so the circulating tumor cells are preserved and they can be analyzed. Also the fact that you're working with blood allows you to have a serial monitoring that means that over time you can do several blood draws and analyze the number of circulating tumor cells before and after treatment. That's why clinicians are really interested in using CTCs to understand what is going on in the blood of patients with cancers. 10 milliliters of blood are withdrawn from a patient with metastatic cancer. Usually it starts before a new treatment will be administered. This is the baseline. And then after the treatment has been started, another sample is taken. And then in three or four weeks, another and so on. Only seven 0.5 mils blood are used from this sample. They are centrifuged and the blood is aspirated. On this particular slide you will see how circulating tumor cells are captured. As we pointed out, circulating tumor cells come from the tumor and they penetrate into the blood vessels. Therefore, these circulating tumor cells are of epithelial origin. They should not be in the blood. They have a molecule called epithelial cell adhesion molecule, which is found only on cells with epithelial origin. Blood or hematopoietic cells will not express this molecule. Therefore, if we coat small ferrofluid particles with an antibody against this epithelial cell adhesion molecule, EPCAM, these antibodies will find only cells expressing EPCAM. If we apply magnets, as shown in box 2, the magnets will attract the ferrofluid particles. Since the particles are coated with the antibody against EPCAM, we will be able to capture or separate the circulating tumor cells in the blood from all the other blood cells. Then the fluid is aspirated and un unlabeled cells are washed off and theoretically and practically we have captured the circulating tumor cell. The magnets are removed, the sample is resuspended, a reagent is added which will cause the formation of pores in the cell membrane Staining reagents are added and they will penetrate through these pores. The staining reagents will go and stain molecules such as cytokeratins, which are typical of epithelial cells. There will be also reagent against a marker CD44 
that is characteristic only of blood cells. Therefore, this is a marker to differentiate the cell that is supposedly a circulating tumor cells from all blood cells, which could be also captured by accident by the magnet. And a third reagent called DAPI will stain the nucleus. Now, the sample is inserted into a small cartridge, which is shown in box 6. The cartridge is put in a magnet device, which has magnets under an angle. The cells are attracted to the surface uh, of a small cartridge, and they are scanned. The image is analyzed, and the data are reported to the clinician. The next slide is very important. This is a study that was first reported by the group of Dr. Cristofanili and his colleagues. At this time, he was at MD Anderson. The data were reported for the first time at the American Society of Clinical Oncology in 2005. You're looking at a Kaplan-Meier chart, which will be explained in detail in the full version of the course. You will understand how this is done and what the chart represents. For this particular presentation, look at the x-axis. This is the time from baseline. And time zero is when patients came, blood with, was withdrawn, and then the new treatment was administered. These were patients with metastatic breast cancer. On the y-axis, you see the probability of survival. Please look at the line with green color. These are all the patients who came and had less than five circulating tumor cells before the new treatment. During all this time, they maintained a number less than five circulating tumor cells in 7.5 milliliters of blood, and they were able to survive, in average, about two years, 22.6 months. Now, patients who had more than five circulating tumor cells at the beginning and who did not have any benefits from the new drug because their number of circulating tumor cells stayed above five, this is the red line once again, had a probability of survival about 4.6 months. And as you can see, the difference between the red and the green line in terms of statistics is very big. Now, the good news is that patients who had more than five circulating tumor cells before they came to the doctor for this particular treatment benefited from the drugs because their number dropped. Once again, this is the blue line. They started with more than five circulating tumor cells in 7.5 mils of blood. And then over time, they dropped the number of cells less than five. And as you can see, their overall survival is almost as the, the, the group in green. It's about 20 months. This is very important data, which shows how circulating tumor cells can be used to predict the outcomes. Scientists who work in the pharmaceutical industry were interested to understand how circulating tumor cells are different from the tumors and what other molecular biomarkers can be studied. On this particular slide, you're looking at data coming from a study published by Pfizer. The Pfizer team developed a drug which is an antibody against the receptor called IGF-1R. And they were interested in looking at circulating tumor cells and also circulating tumor cells expressing this receptor to see how patients, patients will survive due to treatment with the drug. As you can see, over time, some of the patients really showed improvement. And again, I will discuss in detail this particular study in the longer version of the course. Of interest is to know that the circulating tumor cells in the blood can go through apoptosis or cell death. The patient on the left, patient A, has 48% of intact circulating tumor cells. These are the cells that presumably will end up in the liver and in the brain and will develop into new tumors. However, if you look at the picture on the 
right, patient B has only 4% intact circulating tumor cells. Now, there are new studies which show the significance of the damaged circulating tumor cells and the particles and how they are used to predict the outcome of patients. But, in general, data like these are very important for scientists working in the area of clinical oncology who are developing various drugs and who study the cell death of circulating tumor cells and tumor T. I will finish this course with the definition of biomarker, which is a characteristic that is objectively measured and evaluated as an indicator of normal biologic processes, pathogenic processes, or pharmacologic responses to a therapeutic intervention. This is a definition given by the FDA, and I hope that I have convinced you that circulating tumor cells represent very important biomarker platform to study metastasis and hopefully find new effective drugs against cancer. Thank you. This concludes the introductory course. If you are interested in viewing the full version of this course, go to www.biopharmainstitute.com or call 201-800-4430. Thank you, and have a...